Hello, Al. So I took the challenge and my challenge to share with you is um, how can we improve diversity and equity inside of the business? And how can we do that inside of the open source program office, which I will refer here also as OSPOS because it's just too big to say that. Um, for me, open source is much about the philosophy and this is why it's a big challenge. How do you that this collaboration, this sharing inside of a company? This is where the open source program office come from because there we can have action action items and transform this philosophy into a way to live and to put ethics into life. But open source is this crazy thing. It's actually not one thing. We can think about it more as an ecosystem. And why do I say ecosystem? I'm just this thing in the back. Ecosystem because it's not enough just when you put your code, you just throw it into a repository, it would not make it terrible, nor an open source project. It demands a kind of a lot of efforts. And think about the life cycle. This thing has to be born, and then you need to tell people who exist in a meetup or in conference. But then it maybe gets too big, and if it gets too big, you do not have time anymore to code. But if you use open source best practice, you may help get more people on board. Open source is about this crazy polyamorous thing where you have this technical part, but you also have this huge community things and all the things around it. And this is why I say ecosystem is a kind of good word to, word to understand that. The engagement you will need, which is also a fundamental part of every open source project, it depends on the nature of the project, and that can be a whole lot of talk about it, but you mostly depend on how complex is your code and how complex it is to onboard to your project, and how or how easy you make it, yeah, it's a lot of factors there. But one thing, and one thing we can say for sure, is that uh, talking today, speaking today about a software industry without open source, it's impossible. The industry would break. Literally, think of world without Python. Think of it, Python just say, I don't exist anymore. Think about how many companies would literally break. This is why it was needed. This old model of how we used to consume open source. Yay, I would just use it. And there's like a, this one maintainer doing it all. Um, yeah, for free. It was not possible anymore. It is a billionaire industry. And when I say billionaire, I'm not overreacting here. Like I take MongoDB, for example. It is valued in 13 billion monies. It is a billionaire industry. And what happened to the maintainer? It needs to be fairly compensated as well as the, the communities have it back, right? More than fair. This is why we need to reinvent this model. And this is why this it is reinventing itself little by little. The business, which is, well, the ones who have the money and the possibility to contribute it back, I like to understand that this new model of open source, they are trying to hold accountable and understand they are reflecting upon how historically damages has been done, both um, people-wise, oppressive people-wise, but also sustainable-wise. And this is a way to do it. It is actually true, like this new model will save the world. No, unfortunately not. And we do also have historical um, uh, historical accountability to say how much and very many gossips around, uh, how much misogyny, how much oppression, how much unethical things has happened. But it is a model, right? And it's up to us what to do with this model. This is where the open source program office comes. It is a kind of a way, organic way, where the businesses are being held accountable 
for all of this while contributing back to the community. And we have like a happier place somehow. What does it open source, right? It is this place inside of the companies where we nurture, we guide, and we align um, all of the open source methodologies and strategies within the business goes. So you get the both sides. You have the business and you say, oh, this is what you need. Oh, look at the open source methodology. And if you do this, you can happily live together. This is not that easy. And this is why, why? The business needs this healthy relationship, which is so complex. And this thing that I called complex is so thing and complex that even companies like Red Hat, Red Hat, the Linux people, they also have an OSPL. Um, it's dealing with compliance, which means licenses and all of this process with communication with clarity, such as complex for a project. Imagine that for a company that all, you need lots of projects to do your own business and your software. And keeping this ecosystem healthy, sustainable, it is a tough job. Let's. I like this image because I think it... It is a bit abstract, but this image, I like it very much. The image from Linux Foundation, where you said, oh, we consume that much. We need to give back that much as well. And in between, there's all this complexity is going on. Are the communities, are the code, are the reliability, are the funds needed, are the standards? Yeah, it is a lot of things. Um, so this is the main road, right? But, mm, yeah, why? Why actually does an open source program office do in the databases? And I quote, hmm. Reviewing and overseeing open source license compliance, mitigating potential legal risks around licenses. Guiding the organization to collaborate with the open source communities. Foster an open source culture inside of the organization. Creating a solid communication strategy, encouraging organizations to adopt open source skills, educating organizations, associate of the benefits and the best practices of open source, facilitate relationships. Projects and It is a lot of work. Because such as just putting the code inside of the, the repository would not make it shareable in a good open source project. Just being there and saying, yeah, yeah, we're actually helping you. will not actually make this a good relation, a healthy relationship, right? Again, it's needed this technical communication, understanding of the philosophy and the coping it goes all together. Yeah, but with that much in the table, do you, you have even a way to measure that? We do. And this is where the chaos metrics come. <laughs> Wrong. Chaos. It's not actually chaos. It's a kind of complex intersectional efforts to make all of this craziness going on in complexity together, mm, make it more healthy, understandable, and transparent. So the people that actually have the power to make the decision, they have interesting and transparable metrics and can't understand the thing. And when we say about metrics, and this is where it's very interesting and where diversity and equity comes from, is because those metrics, they're much about the contribution, what, when, and who. And that means having a clear understanding of how can act to improve diversity, not only on the participation, but also in governance and leadership. And this is fundamental to change the tech industry. It also means to be attentive to very small details from how the documentation can onboard and accommodate different people. And also, is the project really ready to have different leaderships? And this is what those med metrics are about. It needs to take care of the business side. Oh, am I gonna, what am I going to get from this? Because I need to keep a company up. And also, 
the community thing because if I'm contributing, I need to get something back from me personally and the community. OSPO makes that's why OSPOs it's a very powerful place to promote both diversity, inclusion, and equity. Open source CD is a very powerful seed to, to transform this place. Um, but and we can be very optimistic, right? Because in open source, you can contribute, and they don't see where the contribution comes from. But the sad the truth is that we're not that much. If we think about it statistically and the archetype of uh, white males, they are still so dominant that the diversity part, that it's not that, means 4.5%. Um, Yeah, 4.5% is too little. We cannot achieve diversity equity without actually participating on that. This is why I'm here to talk about the importance to be part and be an active change of this tech revolution much needed. Me, um, I am Paloma. I am representing the Open Source Program Office from South Labs together with my leads, uh, Christian Broman and Diego Molina fabulous human beings and we're super open to receive your doubts or your comments or if you also would like to open your own program open source program office thank you so much for watching this mm -hmm.